The elders of this tribe said they needed to atone for their mistakes, but the younger men disagreed. So in an attempt to save the tribe from certain doom, they severed the heads of all of the elders and began a sort of ritual of appeasement to their creator for what they had done. But unbeknownst to them, things were about to go from bad to worse. The flying head monsters aren't just human-sized heads floating around in the forests. They're massive, seven-foot-tall monsters, with some stories telling of several of these things and others say there is only one. Particular versions of them speak of the flying heads with wings and others without. When their wings are present, they're said to be like those of a bat, but with an incredibly large wingspan. Not only do they have wings, but also horrifying talons, similar to a hawk or eagles. But much larger. Once they catch what they're chasing, they are said to use their massive razor-like fangs to easily dismember anything in their way. And just when you think they can't get any more terrifying, they're said to be covered from head to, well, to bottom of head, I guess, in fur. And beneath this fur is a hide that is impenetrable to ordinary weapons. So if you find yourself being chased by a flying head from Iroquois or Wyando legend, you better be prepared to run, because fighting is pretty much useless. The Iroquois and the Wyando both had legends about flying heads, but one of them lived in the south while the others lived up north. So it makes you wonder, could there really be something to these stories? These flying heads were said to be able to sit upon the ground and were just as tall, if not taller, than a full-grown man. And before I go further, you should know, there are variations to the stories. They're told and retold, so there's no one form that's more true than another or more correct than another. These cicadas, man. But luckily, they're said to have ran off a long time ago when they saw this woman, well, well hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. First off, what are these flying head monsters? And where did they originate? How did they come to be? That is the first story. So first off, all of this allegedly took place at the Scandaga Lake according to a Mohawk guy known as Captain Gill. The name of these people have been lost to time, so just for the sake of the story, I'm just going to refer to them as the tribe. So the tribe had their village on a hill, and if you like to visit this place, you actually can, but you'd probably have to ask permission because it's said to be behind the Hamilton County buildings. But then again, I'm not sure if you'd actually want to go visit a place that's said to be cursed. In fact, even after the tribe was gone, people tried to build hotels there, and they all had very short lifespans and reportedly burned to the ground, but Nobody truly knows why. So a long, long time ago, there was an incredibly harsh winter that wiped out just about everything. It killed the plants, which pushed out the moose and the deer to find food elsewhere. And the tribe had decided not to follow the moose and the deer. Had they followed them, they would have ended up in enemy, oh my gosh, spider webs all over my face. Had they followed them, they would have ended up in enemy territory and that wouldn't have ended well either. In fact, when they tried to get food by fishing, that too had failed. This famine became so intolerable that entire families and households were dying. When it was brought up to the hunters that they needed to follow their food source, they said they couldn't do so. It would risk a tribal war, one which they could not win in their weakened and hungry state. But finally, the tribe came up with a possible solution. They decided they would subscribe to the channel and like the video in the hopes of bringing back the food. But if it didn't in that case, they decided to have a secret march, an exodus if you will. They said if they could just travel to the Great Lake off to the west, then they could safely make it beyond enemy borders and easily find a new home for everyone. Well, the elders of the tribe did not want to go through with this plan. They believed it was doomed for failure and was ultimately just a crazy and horrible idea. They believed that the entire famine was happening because it was a punishment for their crimes that they had committed against their creator. So the elders of the tribe believed that if they would just remain on the land and endure this punishment, then they would be forgiven for their crimes and the food, fish, plants, and all of it would return. But if they ran from their punishment, then the tribe would be cursed forever. So, as you can imagine, they were in a bit of a pickle. If they left, they could potentially outrun what was believed to be a punishment, but could also end up cursing all of the people for all of time. But if they stayed, they may not be able to endure the punishment and the tribe wouldn't survive. One way you get to live, but you're cursed. Another way, you might die. I mean, what would you do if you were in their shoes? You, you can't click this. This is actually just a prompt for you to comment in the comments down below. The elders had even said that they would rather die on their homeland than live out the rest of their days on foreign land where they didn't feel at home. This enraged the younger men of the tribe and they decided to kill off the elders 
so that they could leave without having to deal with them inhibiting their journey or causing conflictions amongst the rest of the tribe. After the young men had killed off all of the elders of the tribe, they wanted to sanctify their crime that they had just committed, or in other words, cleanse themselves of the blood that was now on their hands. So they offered the bodies of the elders to their creator and decapitated them. They burned the bodies and threw the heads into the lake, the Skandaga Lake. But they wanted to be sure that the elders were truly gone, so they used ropes to bind them all together in order to make them sink to the bottom. Now you can call this next part fate, irony, or karma. One of the young chiefs that had plotted against the elders had gotten ensnared in the ropes, and he too was pulled down to the bottom and drowned. After he had drowned, it said that there were bubbles and slime that appeared on the lake before a giant winged head emerged, flew out of the lake, and after having done this, the entire tribe was unable to escape the flying head. It was going to haunt them for the rest of their lives. Now, according to some stories, after these events, the flying head had landed behind a lone woman in the dark of the night. The woman was unaware of what was slowly lurching towards her, as she happily ate and roasted acorns over a fire. And because of this confusion, the flying head was terrified of this woman's power, and it flew away. It flew away to Patreon to help the channel grow. But after this, the flying head was never seen again. There's other variations where the woman tricked the head into eating a hot coal instead of an acorn. So perhaps if you run into one of these flying head monsters, you could use that as a tactic. You see, there's just a lot of variations to these legends, but that's how these stories tend to go. And if these stories are something you're interested in, then check out the playlist on the other incredible stories or this video here. Either way, I'll see you there.